Broadcasting from the Symphony Studios in Marietta, Georgia, it's time for the High Tech Women Podcast, brought to you by Symphony Technology Solutions. Listen in as we speak with and learn from inspiring women who have stepped up and stepped into careers in technology and construction. Now, here are your hosts. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode of the High Tech Women Podcast brought to you by Symphony Technology Solutions. I'm your host today, Katie Galley, and I'm joined in the Symphony studio by a guest, an incredible guest we've had on a couple times now through thought leadership um, and uh, for just different reasons through Gil Bain, we have Grace Kennedy, VDC engineer. How are you doing, Grace? Hey, Katie, I'm good. Glad to be here. Thank you so much for stopping by. Super excited to dive in specifically with you. We know we did the VDC panel um, a couple of weeks back, but really this will be a deep dive into you, your professional journey. So uh, thanks for stopping by. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course. So Grace, can you walk us just through your professional journey to date and then how specifically you got your start in the construction and tech industry? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so during my final year in University of Kansas's five-year Master of Architecture program, um, I participated in a year-long design build studio called Studio 804. Um, I've mentioned it with you uh, a couple times before, but uh, in this studio, just for a recap, 14 graduate architecture students and myself designed and built two houses um, in our college town, Lawrence, Kansas. Um, And in this studio, we were involved in every single step of the process Um, from day one when we didn't even have a lot of land yet, um, all the way through conceptual design, um, submitting construction documents um, to all the on-site work, um, pouring concrete, uh, installing insulation, um, custom cutting and folding metal flashing details, um, all the way to putting the house on the market, the houses on the market, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, it, was deser- it was during this design build studio um, that I found my passion for minimizing on-site issues. Um, Gilbane's VDC, Virtual Design and Construction um, career path, uh, allowed me to work with a team of professionals to do just that. So, uh, and that's, that's where I am today. Wow. That is really cool, though, that you got to be part of ev- literally every step of that process and really figure out then with that hands on experience, which path you might want to go down, you know, specifically one day. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, I spent the previous four years of the um, architecture program at Kansas um, working in inside in the studio, um, first hand hand drafting um, things just so we would understand, you know, the um, initial like the initial way that architects used to hand draft things um and then we transitioned over to digital um so that's where i was creating my projects um but it was that last year where i actually got the hands-on work and i mean i was out in the elements all year round um you know in the freezing snow cold um (laughs) as well as the rain and oh my gosh just you know it was it was fantastic experience. And, um, that's, that's where I found my, my niche. Love it. So really diving in and honing in on the thing that you loved most about, you know, through that architecture program and now leading into what you do today with, um, Gil Bain as a VDC engineer, can you speak to grace? What aspects specifically of that position that you love most? I mean, of course you dove in and went all in with, um, you know, that problem solving component, but what aspects specifically of your role do you enjoy most? Yeah, yeah, good question, Um, because there are a lot. But um, as a Gilbane VDC engineer, um, I'm thrilled that this position constantly challenges me. Um, With the support of my team, um, I can minimize um, in-house or issues in-house before they might become an issue on on site. Um, So that constant daily challenge, love it. You know, I'm never bored. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And um, so secondly, I really enjoy leading a team. Um, I really enjoy empowering my peers to use their creativity um, and also managing schedule timelines. Um, I just, I like being part of a team that is working together on um, a common goal. 
I love that. And that, uh, that team aspect, it sounds like maybe at one point in your life, you played sports. <laughs> Is that true? Good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How'd you know, Katie? Crazy. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, sports have been a huge part of my, my life. Um, growing up, I played every sport imaginable. Um, in high school, I honed in on softball. Um, planning, I was planning to play um, softball at University, University of Virginia, actually. Um, got two stress fractures in my back my junior year of high school. So that kind of altered my future there. Uh, it wasn't as sports related, but uh, I took a lot of the a lot of those um, lessons learned and those um, key aspects of sports. And I pulled it into my current career today, like managing, like the teamwork aspect, uh, et cetera. Yeah. Which is amazing being able to draw on those experiences. Of course, you had that specific experience in that program um, in school, but then to having uh, reflecting back on like sports, for example, like you just said, I mean, having those specific experiences that lended to being on a team, having that community building ability and that team management ability, and that translates into what you do today. Definitely, definitely. And I mean, that's, that's another thing. So, you know, leading a team, being a part of a team, something I love. And uh, so those relationships that you make, every project, you know, is new. It's, it's different. You got a different players entering in. And um, I, I love making new connections, meeting new people, um, working together with them. It, you know, it's, it's constant um, lessons learned, um, constant uh, networking, et cetera. Love it. Yeah. So Grace, in those, I mean, never ending experiences and lessons learned um, and everything that's led you to where you are today and knowing, of course, you're going to continue to grow and continue to learn those lessons. um, What piece of advice would you advise or give to a young woman entering into either VDC or the tech space construction? Just what piece of advice would you give to them? Hmm. Um, Biggest thing is I would say, learn to be adaptable. Anybody entering into this career field um, got to learn to be adaptable. Um, every project is different. Um, every coordination effort is different. Um, for example, a solution that worked for one project uh, may not work for the next one due to you know different variables, different location, different material types, uh, different players involved. Um, another example, especially in tech, um, you might have to use a new software or there might be a new update um, that you're not familiar with, but you have to you have to understand and you have to use in that new project workflow. Um, and just just with how quickly tech is evolving um, daily, it seems like, oh, my gosh, uh, ad- adaptability, I would say, is just huge. Man. And so in that, I mean, in you have to be willing and you have to just be adaptable if you want to be successful or just enter into this space. So were there times where, or I guess, can you cite a time where um, you kind of came up against it and you realize I have to learn how to adapt or I'm going to like, I can't freak out. I have to learn how to adapt in the moment. And how did you kind of navigate that, um, that experience? Yeah, no, um, good question. I, I, I would, I would say the biggest thing is learning new software programs. Yeah. So um um, Autodesk, for example, um, Navisworks, that is the um, software that I use um, every single day in my job as a, a VDC engineer. And that um, software, it basically, it houses the, um, the project models from architects, engineers, um, trade contractor models, etc. Um, and we're able to um, use use that model that is the digital twin of the project um, and manipulate it, run clash detections, et cetera. Um, and I, again, that, that is a program that I wasn't super familiar with when I first entered into um, this career field, but it's just something um, that, that I had to learn and I had to get familiar with. Um, but just like learning any new software, um, it, it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of YouTube tutorials, a lot of practice, (laughs) a lot of um, failing and then succeeding. Um, But it it can be a struggle in the beginning. But once you learn this new tech language, um, it becomes easier to transition from program to program and understand the basic setup of most 
programs. Um, you got, you know, like your workspace, you might have your tabs along the top with different tools, different space uh, or workspaces, etc. cetera. Um, you, you kind of, you kind of learn um, the similarities between, between programs. Yeah. And that makes sense. And it seems to kind of underlying it is a willingness, especially in the beginning, it can be overwhelming or even when new updates come out, right. You have to learn, learn different aspects of that software um, to being able to trust yourself and not be debilitated by the fear of I'm going to fail or having that anxiety. It's just, you decided you're going to do this and you will succeed because it's something you're passionate about, you're driven towards. So just knowing that you're going to figure it out, it just might take some time. Yeah. And, and knowing which, knowing which tools um, the project requires, um, that's important as well. Um, so as a VDC engineer, we, we are, our Gilbane group, we have laser scanners, um, drones, um, all sorts of fun tools, uh, hollow builder, like all, all of these different tools have different purposes. And depending on when we enter a project, um, depending on if it's renovation, new build, um, or, or, you know, type of project, it could, the, the tools that we are using and incorporating um, vary. Hmm. Yeah. And that makes sense. So then being familiar enough or learning um, along the way and uh, I guess figuring out which tool is going to be associated best with which project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. that makes sense. Yeah. Well, Grace, as always, this has been such a pleasure. So thank you for taking the time. If someone wanted to learn more about you and Gilbane, where might they do that? Um, cool. Well, thanks, Katie, mm-hmm. uh, first off. And uh, yeah, uh, Grace Kennedy on LinkedIn. Um, just research me more than welcome to connect with me, uh, send me a message. Um, and then, uh, an email, uh, my Gilbane email is gkennedy1 at gilbaneco.com. Thank you all for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this episode. To learn more about Symphony, you can follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube at Symphony Technology Solutions and on Instagram at Symphony Tech Solutions. Never forget that wherever your pursuits take you, cling to the truth that you are absolutely made for a time such as this. See you on our next episode.